This is Howard from BigHBricklin.com and today is suspension day for your Bricklin. We're going to teach you how to get rid of the old rotten rubber bushings in your suspension and replace them with modern urethane bushings that do not rot. While we're in there, we're also going to be replacing the ball joints. Why not? Doesn't hurt. Usually the upper is bad after 20,000 miles. That one supports all the way to the vehicle. The replacements are much better quality and the lower the boots go bad. So what do those 45 and 46 year old rubber bushings look like? Garbage. Crumbling garbage. <laughs> Unbelievable. Look at this stuff. These are bushings we just removed from a car. This is what's in your Bricklin. And what do the ball joints look like? Broken boots. No preload. That's an upper. They're shot. If you can move the joint, it's no good. You shouldn't be able to move it with your hand very easily. These new ones here, ah, I cannot move them with my hands. Not strong enough. So what's in the bushing kit? Come on down here and I'll show you. You have nice, pretty urethane bushings, black, so that it looks factory from a distance. New bump stops. Rear spring bushings that fit. Uh, front spring eyelet bushings that fit, strut rod bushings, upper and lower control arm bushings, and we have grade 8 bolts to replace the grade 5 bolts that are in your suspension. This is a grade 5 bolt that we removed from the upper control arm of a Bricklin, and you can see that it's bent. When I put it in the drill, it's not too hard to tell what's going on. That affects ride height and the alignment of the vehicle. Now after disassembling your suspension, uh, cleaning the grease off and removing the ball joints and the bushings, you may want to sandblast, then epoxy prime to prevent corrosion, and paint it with a paint of your choice. I recommend urethane for more of the concourse look. Uh, if you could even use Rust-Oleum if you'd like, if you want to save some money. If it's done right, it looks pretty. So now we're going to take the uh, control arm bushing out, and we need two tools for that. Need a ball joint press and a nut and bolt. You can get an old one, a new one, it really doesn't matter. Slide the uh, <clears throat> ball joint press over the end of the bushing. Tighten it up on the uh, bolt. Do this part by hand, it's better. Then we grab impact. Or you can actually do it by hand. This is just a lot faster. And we push the sleeve right out. Now at this point you want to have this set up where after you push it through you can just unscrew the nut and take the bolt right out. And if the nut gets stuck get a wrench out. Sometimes the threads get buggered up. Now at this point, you're left with just the rubber bushing. Now here's the fun part. You grab a needle nose pliers, which is right here. Give it a shove. Now, once you get it in there, you give it a twist. And that rubber come right out it's spinning here it is with a control arm and there we go we're going to remove the front spring eyelet pushing and we're going to use the same ball joint press nut and bolt or wheel stud and bolt which is slightly larger in diameter and we're going to put it in the bushing and push the sleeve out with the ball joint press.
put the ball joint press over the spring eyelet, tighten it down by hand, make sure it's straight. There we go. Notice the sleeve is coming out. Focus on this. And there it is. Now, reverse it. Alright, if you got the bolt in too far one way or the other and you think it's stuck, just push it out using the same tool. I wouldn't go any farther than that or you'll have to push the tool out. See, it wants to get stuck. Now, heavy spring. Now, at this point, we can unscrew the nut from it and push it out. We're going to re-push this so the nut comes out the other side. There it goes. And the nut comes out. And how do we get this part out? Just push it. So now we have the bushing ready for removal. Once again, grab the needle nose pliers, stick it in there, as far as you can go. Ugh. There you go. I'm gonna loosen it up from both ends here. You can hear it rip loose. Yep, it's coming. I'm going to turn this upside down the way I normally do it. There we go. That's a little more stable. And it comes right up. There. Do not, do not burn your bushings out. It will ruin your suspension parts. And all we have is a sleeve to remove. This is a loop of spring steel. Right here is where we want to cut it because there's actually a gap there. I can stick this, you know, those pliers down in the gap. So we're gonna get, in my case, we're gonna get the air chisel. You can get a chisel and it will do it on its own. You just slice it and that will reduce the diameter. This will decompress and the sleeve will come right out. Air chisel. Sheet metal cutting bit. Right here. Do not hit the spring. Now we can switch to a flat sided chisel. One sleeve. Now we're going to take the upper ball joint out of a rather rusty uh, Bricklin control arm for demonstration purposes. So the first thing we're going to do these rivets right here have to be removed. So we have to actually drill out the top part of them to take them out nice and neat. Otherwise, you're going to chop up the control arm. We're going to need a few tools here. I like this kind of a uh, center punch to get things started. Because you push on it, you get it right in the center, push on it, makes a snap. And there's your center punch. So I'm going to do that to all four. Now 
Oh, see, that one's a little off. I'm going to center it again. There. Now, what I do next is get a hammer and a punch and put it in that small center punch. Give it a whack. Tap it first. Hit it. So now we have a really good center punch right in the center. Now, if you're worried about busting your knuckles with a hammer, grab a vice grip or makeshift chisel holder. Put it in the center punch. Boy, I can whack it without even worrying about hurting myself. There we go. Pull back. Now we're going to use a drill, 1 8 inch. It's called a pilot drill. You don't go too fast with a uh, steel drill on steel, uh, it'll dull it out, so keep your speed down. We have to drill just below the depth of the control arm. That way we can knock the rivet out, take the tension off of it, get it out of there. We're not there yet. That's pretty good. Now uh, we're going to do the rest of them. You can... Very good. Now we're going to change to a quarter inch drill bit. Got a nice short one here. Gets me inside the fender. Now we drill to the bottom of the hole. Yep, we're there. Okay. All right. Stump off the metal chips. Next step, air chisel or hand chisel. And the type of chisel we're going to be using is flat on the bottom and has a wedge on the top. That's the only kind you can use that you're going to do damage to the control arm. Nice and easy to get the rivets out. You can do it by hand or with the air chisel. Well, it took the whole ball joint out. That's nice. That makes it easy. There you go. So this is ready to be uh, put in the blast cabinet, cleaned up, primed, and painted. Now we're going to do the upper and lower control arm installation of the ball joints. This is the upper, this is the ball joint that goes with it, this is the lower, and this is the ball joint that goes with it. Completely different looking. So first, we're going to fit the lower ball joint in. This will come in three pieces, the boot, the boot retainer, and the ball joint. You have to sandwich them together, install them this direction in the arm. Always put the bolt straight down. Got to line everything up. Put a lock washer on and a nut. Give it a spin. Make sure you get all the bolts in before you tighten any of them down at all or you will bind stuff and it will slip and come loose. All right now I recommend hand tightening them but you can run them down an impact. Go back and forth. Now we'll tighten them by hand after we get done with both of them. We'll flip it over and now we put the grease fitting in. 
there's generally no threads in here. These actually thread themselves. And it's a little tricky. So you got to get it to start. I think this one actually might have threads. And you take a 3 8 wrench and start cranking it around. Now, if I leave this grease fitting in this position, you have to take the wheel off to grease the ball joint. That's kind of not so good. So we want this to face the rear or the front when we're done. And if you decide, oh, I think I'll go another turn and another turn and another turn, eventually you're going to break it off. Then you'll have to extract it or get another ball joint. So I'm going to kind of put my leg up here, crank this around, and I'm going to face the front on this one, because this one goes on the right-hand side. Now, just so I don't lose parts, I'm going to spin my nut on, on top of the cotter pin. That way, I don't lose it on the way to the car. Set this one aside. Now we're going to work on the lower control arm. Now on this one, this is actually part of the mounting point for the strut rod. And that also holds that in. This only goes on one way. If you put it on this way, the holes don't line up. So you have to rotate it this direction. Once again, put the bolts through. Here we're going to put the nuts on. These are fine threads. Notice I have a towel on the workbench. That's because these are painted. Make sure these holes are lining up. Now you have to get a lineup tool to make sure that they're in the right position. Grease fitting on this one, a little different. This one definitely does not have threads. I like to use an 8mm or 5 16 ratchet wrench. Push down with your thumb and ratchet it in. I love ratchet wrenches. Nice and snug. Okay, now we're going to slide our cotter pin in here so we can take it, walk it around or Put it near the car, and if we don't get to it till next week, then that's for the people at home. I have to get stuff done faster. <laughs> okay, now we're going to torque this by hand. I like to use uh, ratchets. This is a well-used one that are plastic and rubber handled, so we don't chop up the paint. The owner of this control arm will definitely appreciate that. Now you kind of have to. You don't want to over tighten it, but make sure that it's definitely tight. Which is really not a bad idea, especially if you've never done this before. About 15 foot pounds will work great. These are also grade 8 bolts, that's why it's 15 foot pounds. And we're going to do. The upper ball is going at 15 foot pounds also. Same bolt, same thread pitch. There we go. Beautiful. And we're not done yet. It's bushing time. Upper control arm bushings. In the kit, you'll find some silicone grease. And we're going to grab a little round type screwdriver. This one's a Torx. Dip it in here and put a little bit in the sleeve. Just a little bit, not much. Try not to get it on the paint. That's why we paint them first. If I got that on the control arm before we painted it, too bad, it ain't gonna stick. Take the sleeves out of the bushings. Not hard to do. These are the uppers. 
Two for each arm, not free. There's a special tool for that, right? It's called a rubber mallet. Set this on the bench on a towel, and we're in. Now, the next step, after we put the other one in, is to take more of the silicone grease. There's little grooves in here. You want to kind of fill those up. Just try to fill them up. You may not get all of it, but try to fill them up. Goopy gloppy grease there. Okay, now using the same special tool, it looks like I'm beating on it, but the rubber mallet has a lot less force. You can even go like this. There. Okay, do not use a regular hammer. And I would like to see it go a little bit flusher, if you can get it in there. That one did it. Now the bolt that we were used to remove the sleeve out of the rubber bushing, if it doesn't seat all the way, give it a couple taps with that. It'll make it a lot easier to fit in the car. This one's done. Now we're going to do the lower control arm takes a different bushing. There we go. Ah. Push the sleeve out. This little bolt comes in handy. There we are. Got to put a little bit in the sleeve. It's only to get it to slide in easier. And it only goes in one way. Not too hard. And then we are going to fill this with a little grease. So you want to fill up those grooves just like that. Okay. Now this bushing takes an extra part. The extra piece goes right here on top of the back side. Give it a tap, put it in. Now take some of this residual stuff, smear it around the edge of the bushing. This one will squeeze in on the car when you install it. There we go. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna hit this one more time. A little bolt action. Perfect, it's flush. Now some people have chosen to leave these out. I wouldn't do that. This can walk around a little bit without it. All right. This is painted, so we got it on rubber and a fatigue mat. Great little thing to keep you from scratching the paint off. Same thing has to happen here. You got to do the uh, grease inside the bushing and then you want to put a little on the outside or inside the spring eyelet. We did take the bushing out as you remember previously. So this time I'm going to put a little on my finger and stick it in here. Swish that around. Make that all happy so that bushing goes back in there. So we're going to Pop it in. There's a little bit of tension on the spring, so you do have to whack it. May not be big enough. I'm going to take the big, I don't know what this is, a pound and a half or something. There we go. Pound and a half. Because that is compressing that bushing. So it takes a little bit of effort. Flip it over. Try not to scratch the paint. Okay. 
put the grease on your finger a little bit more there we go probably doesn't hurt to put a little on here anyway see if the rubber out will get in on the other side yeah see that I've squeezed it out with the other bushing so that's it all right now we got to fill up these little grooves in here down in here you know the bad part is I gotta pick this spring up again to get to the other side but maybe I'll just slide it off the bench a little bit there we go that'll work and guess what push the sleeve in rubber mallet like that you can use the rubber mallet to protect big hammer and there we go bushing installed in the front spring eyelet now this one's really hard on all these bushings here come on here real close you'll see some short ones and some long ones four short and four long these go in the spring the short ones go up on the top near the frame on the shackle so here we go again put a little lube there this one's pretty easy come on over here just squish them in you can practically push them in without doing anything but I am going to make this easy on myself set one end on the bench that wasn't very hard all right so now we're going to put the uh, rear shackle on which consists of this piece this piece and this piece now come on down here Remember we had the long bushings and the short bushings. We've already used two long bushings on this spring. So we're going to use the two short ones on the shackle that fit into this area right here. So let's uh, put a little bit in here. A little bit of grease. And... Smack that one. There we go. Sometimes you can just push them right in. Oh. Inside that. There we go. That looks great. Now, if you notice, short and long on the bolts. So, we are going to grease up this part of the bolt where the shaft is, the non threaded part of the shaft. And you got to remember, there's a right hand and a left hand. The nuts go towards the outside of the car. And that means that this will be a right hand spring. You push. And walk it back and forth. There we go. That seems to be the way to go. Now, a little bit of lube in the middle of this. This bar goes towards the front of the car. I'm going to flip this spring over. Actually, now we're ready for the plate. Now remember, this plate is offset. So you don't want to put it on backwards. There we go. That's perfect. Now we're going to put the uh, locking nuts on, zip them down on the shackle over here. When we put it in the car, slide the uh, front eyelet into the mounting bracket and use the supplied grade 8 bolts. You can reuse the locking nut that came with the car. Rear spring bushings can also be replaced in the car one side at a time. I hope this video has been helpful in your Brickland restoration. For more information about Brickland suspension parts, go to BigHBrickland.com.